Hello, and welcome back to Compounding Infinity, the podcast where we bridge the gap between the belief in the metaphysical and extraterrestrial. Today, we have another book review, and this one is for the book Conversations with the She by David Spangler. As you already know, this season we're going to be focusing on the Telosi, who go by many names. This, of course, includes the She. Eventually, we're going to compare all of these titles to get an overarching look at this race of beings and what they want our relationship with them to look like. We'll look at what they're like as a race, a bit of their history, why they want to interact with us and how they've done so in the past, etc, etc. I believe this book is a great point of reference for that. I was able to dig up a lot of information in here and I was just in love with how these conversations were written and described. So without further ado, let's get into this review. So in the introduction, which is titled The Beginning, David Spangler talks about the events leading up to the creation of this book. A friend of his published a book by the spiritual teacher named John Matthews called The She, which means People of Peace. That book became very popular, so the demand for content about The She increased. Eventually, The She contacted two different people and told them that they would like a card deck to be designed and produced that would serve as a point of contact between their world and ours. John Matthews was too busy with other projects and eventually David Spangler was the one chosen to create this card deck. He is unexpectedly contacted by a she woman and giving a broad overview of how they would like the cards to work and what things they wanted to avoid. Eventually, David develops an interesting connection with these people as they come to him from a higher dimension and instruct him on what they want in regards to the cards. This book serves as an interesting look into the relationship between David and the she, as well as an instruction on how to use these cards. I've noticed some less than seller reviews under the actual deck of cards on Amazon because people were trying to use them as a regular tarot. They are not meant to be used this way, and I think to truly understand how they are meant to be used, it is very important for people to read this book first so they don't make the mistake that I saw in the reviews. Not only is it a much needed instruction for these cards, but it also shows an interesting connection that can exist between these higher dimensional beings and beings of the 3D. As you know, I purchased this book to get a better look at the Telosi and their many aspects, and even though it serves as an instruction manual, I was able to get a great look at how these beings communicate with us from the 5D and higher because if you aren't aware, these beings exist across a spectrum of dimensions. Now in this introduction, I've highlighted the fact that they did not want to impose a certain form on the she as a people because they are a very diverse race. That is a point that is hit on a lot in this book because they state that people expect to see blonde elves and fairy armor riding horses when their people are much more diverse than that. Yes, some of them do look like that, but to limit them to this archetype erases the many different aspects of their people and society. So the main she being that David interacts with, he calls Marielle, and her text is put in blue to distinguish who is speaking. How she describes herself is fascinating. Here's the quote I'm referring to. I am not a priestess, at least not the way you think. Oh, there may be similarities in that I work with various subtle energies, but I'm more artist than priestess. I'm like a weaver, skilled in touching and blending together threads of energy and life drawn from a variety of dimensions of reality. I suppose you could think of me as akin to those you call shamans in your world. The use of the color blue for her text is purposeful as well, but I'll let you discover that on your own when you read this text. So he describes that as time goes on, the form of the she that interact with him evolve from wispy cloud-like forms to individuals who look human with a touch of grace and beauty. Now, if you have been here with me and have heard the other descriptions of the Telosi, this description matches up perfectly. Now, this book is organized in parts, but the conversations do not go in chronological order. Instead, they're organized by topics and themes, much like the books by Alan Kardec, which I hope to cover at some point on this podcast as well. So part one is the initial contact and communication spanning over two years. Part two of the book is centered around a class that they held in which the she came through very strongly and clearly to educate the group that they were teaching. 
Part three of the book contains all of the exercises that Marielle recommends to connect with these beings and attune yourself to the star energies. This book is very helpful to those that actually wish to reach out and interact with these beings instead of reading or listening to podcasts about them. <laughs> so if you're one of these people, definitely include this title into your library. If you're not, you can just stick with me and we'll just keep talking about it here. I also want to note that throughout this book, Marielle will emphasize that their hope is for us to not re really focus on them necessarily, but on helping us know ourselves in new and empowering ways, which is a theme that you'll see with other ET races that want to help us as well. They want us to understand that we are their equals. They do not wish to be elevated to God status. The she specifically wish to be viewed as cousins or family because we are. I do also want to point out that the author does not want people to think of his words as holy writ, but just as field notes. This is something that a lot of channeled works are challenged with as well. Humans seem to always want to deify worlds and beings that they don't understand. And the main point that Marielle was trying to get across to us is that we're just as magical and important as they are, just in different ways. So part one is titled Initial Conversations and chapter one is called Cousins. And in this chapter, I think it's very interesting how Marielle describes how the suffering and the pain that we experience reverberates all the way up to their world. So in essence, they are affected by our pain as well, as changes that happen globally. She also goes into more detail about how humans feel them as they travel closer to their world, like wisps of clouds of energy. This reminds me of the beginning of finding your elven heart, when the she that are having a conversation with each other regard us as dark phantom-like beings. They state that the common explanation of our eventual separation is described as occurring after the world became less energy and more matter. The she remained more energetic and we descended into a more material existence. The true occurrence is much more complicated than that, but she does go on to say that the separation was born out of experimentation and exploration and not out of conflict. They do go on to explore more of this topic and even bring up the astral realm in this chapter, and it was really enjoyable to read her point of view on it. Ultimately, she does describe that we share one world, but do so in different ways. She also states that some parts of the she world is lost in its own self-reflection, which is a topic she touches on more in this chapter as well. So chapter two is called Beyond Nature, and she explains more about their nature and how they die just as we do. And when that happens, their souls go into the spiritual planes just as our souls do, which draws a very interesting parallel and demystifies them to some extent. They do live much longer than us, but it is an, an interesting reminder about how we can be so different yet so similar. She also addressed Agartha and the legends that state that they've moved to Hollow Hills. She says it is a metaphor for the most part and that they've moved into a special wavelength that she calls a sort of proto-earth, which goes hand in hand with how this world is described in Talos Volume 1 and in our interview with Cleo, who was able to go to the city of Talos via the astral realm. So look out for that interview coming very soon. She also gets into the differentiation of the Settle Realms and how their world compares to ours. And it's truly fascinating for anyone who has an interest in the Astral Realms and the ones around it. In the last message, she talks about how a lot of the She have blended with the Devas, which comes up in Talos Volume 1 by Aurelia Louise Jones when she talks about the creation of the Crop Circles. I think if you're a fan of Talos Volume 1 and the other titles I've covered on the Talosi, then you will definitely be a fan of this one. Just like how Talos Volume 1 greatly expands upon the outline given in A Gift from the Stars, this book really informs Talos Volume 1 as well with some additional explanations of their world and interesting perspectives not fully seen in Talos Volume 1. So chapter 3 is called A She Civilization. And in this chapter, they immediately talk about J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings and how it had a hand in influencing the idea of what the she look like. And Mariel states that they wish to change and expand our vision of them. She states they are a star-faring people, which we are just in the beginnings of achieving, and they are a very modern race. 
I think it's very interesting that she wants to expand our minds of who we think these people are. Because if you've been tuning into this podcast and have seen my other episodes on these people, we approach them first from the realm of space and their identity as the Telosi. So a lot of these descriptions she brings up on this race are descriptions that we started off with. It's like all of these points are coming together to create a bigger picture with these titles, which is exactly what I wanted to do in this series by comparing and grouping these titles together. I want you all to see the full big picture when it comes to this race of beings and how diverse and interesting they are. And I love that we may have achieved that by comparing all of these titles. Marielle also talks about how our worlds sometimes overlap and how it is possible to step into their world in a 3D body and how they can do the same vice versa. She goes on to explain the phenomenon on how our world shapes theirs, and because we are of the 3D, we can't really see a lot of the picture like they can. If we journey far enough from the borderlands that slightly merge our worlds, we would have trouble seeing what's all there on their side because of our 3D nature. She does explain why and goes on to tell the author about the cities and how they are concentrations of creativity and art. She then goes into the creation process of their world and how they create their cities. And this process is actually described in a lot of detail in Talos Volume 1. So in a future video, we'll read from both explanations and compare their descriptions. We also go into the hierarchy structure, which is fascinating to me no matter how many times I read it in different titles. Because as a human, I never really thought of other beings having hierarchy structures as well. I thought that was just a dust thing. <laughs> Of course, theirs is way more advanced than ours and makes a lot more sense. So it was great to read that these structures can actually work when applied, you know, intelligently. <laughs> so chapter four is called Collaboration. And in this chapter, we go into more depth on how the she want us to recognize our inner power and how similar we are to them. The idea of the she within is going to come up in other titles and I think it's explained very eloquently here and establishes that firm foundation of their reasoning for coming to work with us. She does describe other she that are closer to us and we're able to achieve this by surrendering to our thought forms in order to interact with us and be understood. It makes me wonder if these are the beings we see described in other titles that have close encounters. As well, could these be the beings that are referred to when we talk about the Telosi that are still living in Agartha? She gives some other metaphors so that we can understand the differences between our worlds, and it really does help you understand this topic better. I'm always a fan of a well-applied metaphor, so this book is chock full of them, and it, it just makes the process of understanding our differences and similarities much easier. Another interesting conversation is on the changes that are happening in our world ecologically. She doesn't get into fear mongering, but she does state, while these changes are a concern, we'd be better off fearing the collapse of hope. Now, if you've seen my reviews of A Gift from the Stars and We Will Never Let You Down, both of course by Elena Danan, you'll know how important it is that we keep faith and keep our vibrations high. And to see this referenced again really drives the subject home for me. So chapter five is called The Mantle. And in this chapter, the planetary portals are discussed and how the she are the guardians of these portals. We discuss how important they are and then are given the exercise called the Guardian Mantle exercise to be used with the She card deck. One thing I love about the many titles on the She and the Telosi is that they always give you exercises or meditation in order to connect with them and to yield observable results. You probably remember the Telosi Jade Temple of Healing meditation I posted from Talos Volume 1. We get to witness the results of that meditation in our interview with Cleo. We can come to the conclusion that they are very serious about wanting to help us and to see us get those results. So I definitely recommend giving at least one of these exercises a try. You may be surprised with the results. So chapter six is called an experiment and we talk about Christ in this chapter and his connection to these beings. This, of course, is a topic that's talked about in, not surprisingly, Talos Volume 1, but as well in the Kingdom of the Shining Ones, which I think is a very interesting note. We get a lot of history in regards to Christ in this chapter, and I think for me it was fascinating to hear these other beings talk about him, and it makes some of the mentions of Christ in books 
like The Medium's Book by Alan Kardec and Guards of Eden makes sense for me. For someone who was traumatized by modern Christianity, hearing him talked about in these titles is very refreshing, and I feel like it helps me reshape the idea I have about Christ. You'll learn that a lot of things about him were changed over the years to fit certain agendas, so you'll have to keep that in mind when we encounter him in these texts and try to keep your biases at bay. Something that I really liked in all of the parts is how the author includes his own thought in interpreting what Mariel is saying so that we can get a better understanding of these ideas she presents. The examples that he uses are actually very helpful because it puts her words into a human perspective and draws helpful comparisons. Mariel also mentions that the she need to contact many different people so that they can have different perspectives on the messages that they're given. So I believe, and can confirm, that they have been reaching out to many different people all over the globe in many different ways. This makes perfect sense to me. Out of the different works that I've read from these same beings, I was able to gather a different piece of the puzzle and understand a common concept in different ways because of the different writers and how they each approach the same questions. On top of that, these are different she from different parts of the she world. So it's amazing to see how they themselves approach the same questions in interesting and enlightening ways, and all slightly different while giving the same answer. It truly informs my thoughts on different subjects and takes away the idea that these things have to be black and white. You really get to look at all of the gray areas that exist within a subject. So part two of the book, like I said before, is the class. And we get another introduction that explains the class and the importance of it in regards to the topics that are covered in this part of the book. We also get some more history as well as messages, which you know I'm always a fan of. I thought the different explanations of the classes of she and what they do was fascinating. She talks about the cosmic origin of the she, but doesn't hit on it too much. I kind of smile to myself at this fact because the other titles on these beings fill that in very nicely. The way that she describes our ancient origin as a species is also very engaging, especially coming directly from a race of people who were there at the time and witnessed its creation. Anyone who is interested in Earth history and the history of our species will really appreciate this section and all of the knowledge that's packed into it. Now, well, there is much more information that you will certainly want to read about in this section, but I don't want to get too deep into it all because I'll have to fight the urge to analyze it. But just know that if you're a fan of information and research like I am, you will absolutely love the descriptions and information given in the rest of part two. We get a very special look inside a part of their world from the perspective of Marielle, as well as a description of what we as human beings bring to the table when working with the she. This part is touching and I love it just as much as I love part one. So part three of this book is the meat and potatoes for anyone interested in interacting with the she because it comes full of exercises that you can employ to communicate with them. I wish I had the time to really try these out and report back to you right now, but I'm afraid that might be something I'll have to put off into the future. I'm interested in what your results are though. So if you feel like sharing after trying these exercises, please don't hesitate to let us know how your experience was in the comments. So my final thoughts on this book is that it is truly amazing and enlightening. It not only gives a wealth of information to the reader on the world of the she and earth origin, but really establishes a tangible bridge between us and this race of beings. Throughout this book, they encourage you to reach out to them and establish a conversation and relationship with them. And I love that about this title. You will notice the same in other titles about this race and how they always give you tools to communicate and reach out. I appreciate this book for all of the information it brings and I definitely recommend it. And I will even go as far as to say that for those who want to establish communication with these beings, it is a must have. I'm definitely going to look and see if there's a second book following this one because I'd love to hear more from Marielle and more on these topics. They have a lot to teach us and help us with and I would recommend the deck as well if you want to try some of the exercises laid out in this book. From the looks of it, it's very beautiful and well designed. I'll be getting my hands on all the she decks, so when I do, I'll definitely post reviews for those as well. All in all, I'm so glad I got this book and I'm glad to be able to present it to you so that you may give it a chance and learn some of the wonderful information they present in here. Even if you don't plan on purchasing the card deck, this is a very well put together book. And if you're someone that's just looking for research, this does it very, very well. So you get the best of both worlds here. 
So that is my review of Conversations with the She by David Spangler. As always, a link to purchase that, as well as the card decks, will be posted in the description. If you end up picking up this title, please do let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if you have any new book suggestions, please leave those in the comments as well. And don't forget to check out my Amazon list if you're looking for new books for yourself or you want to contribute to new titles for this channel. I'm your host, Jade Lore. Until next time.